So, um, I'm still thinking in the back of my mind how crazy it was to watch in real time on social media Diddy's house, Sean Diddy Combs, get searched by the federal officials. It was absolutely wild to watch it all transpire and play out online um, because obviously most of us have been following this case for, you know, whatever it may be, um, ever since the whole Cassie thing happened. But it's been pretty wild, especially someone like myself, uh, I would say uh, a fan of hip hop, to watch all of this stuff flipping play out in real time has been flipping wild to watch. Wild, 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 wild. So let's watch, let's quickly um, read this article courtesy of NBC that kind of breaks down the kind of latest kind of going on and what happened in the last couple of days and stuff. It says, Sean Diddy Combs is a subject of federal investigation amid a wave of lawsuits that have been filed against a music mogul since November. A source familiar with the matter told NBC News on Monday. Three women and a man have been interviewed by federal officials in Manhattan in relation to allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics firearms. And the source said interviews with three other subjects have already been scheduled. Four law enforcement officials told NBC News that federal agents with Homeland Security investigations on Monday executed a search warrant at Los Angeles and Miami properties along belonging to Combs. The source says the warrant is out on the South District um, of New York. And obviously there you see a picture of all the police officers there going to Diddy's home and seizing what looks like to be laptops and hard drives with malarkey. HSI confirmed in a statement that it executed the law in enforcement actions in New York as part of an ongoing investigation along with the teams in Los Angeles and Miami. So I'm guessing you know, those are all the three locations of his homes, which is absolutely amazing, by the way, right? Imagine being able to, to own expansive, huge mansions in New York, Los Angeles and Miami. Diddy was living right, but unfortunately, not so right. Homeland Security officials seized phones from Combs in Miami before we before he was scheduled to depart for a trip in the Bahamas. According to three law enforcement sources familiar with the warrant, Combs was in Miami area when the authorities executed the searches. Source, sources say it's not clear if Combs made the trip as planned. Representative of Combs did not immediately respond to NBC's request to comment on Monday. So, again, a real crazy situation that's transpired um for myself mostly because i've kind of been a big fan of diddy in terms of what he represented in terms of being like an intern that sort of like was able to kind of you know you know scrape and claw his way up to the very 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 top of culture become a mogul become a legit entrepreneur become a real kind of icon in music and culture overall but there was always this kind of like I wouldn't say dark energy, but there was always kind of a bit of a dark cloud around him when it came to the party stuff. And it kind of made me think in general, is is there ever a possibility for somebody to be into the party shit, to be a bit of a freak boy, but not do sh illegal fucked up shit to people? Is that ever possible? Can you have freak offs? Can you be into like, you know, drinking fucking you know, water, no, no, drinking Ciroc sprinkled with Molly every other day, um, doing lines off of fucking strippers bums without being abusive, without being manipulative, without harassing, without graping. Is that actually possible? I'm wondering, is it actually possible to do all that stuff with consenting adults without stepping over the line? Or is that just the nature of that game, a nature of that kind of scene where you keep pushing things, you keep pushing things, you keep pushing things, and then it gets to a point where sometimes the actual next step for you to actually get some level of like satisfaction from that situation is to do stuff without people's consent. It's to do stuff with, under duress. It's to do stuff with a threat of violence, a threat of whatever. Maybe that's the part of it. Maybe that's the unfortunate circumstances of where it kind of goes. It's really fucking sad because on one side of things, you think to yourself, what a crazy fall from grace. But on the other side of things, you think to yourself, think of all the victims who have been silenced all these years because of how incredibly powerful, rich, influential, um, you know, did he is as a person and what he represents and who he's associated with and who he knows and the contacts and the this and the that and his history as well. His history of being an actual legit gangster. If you know, you know. If you know, you fucking know. Diddy is with the shits. Diddy is not a guy to be played with, right? So all those things in mind, can you think of the amount of victims that have been silenced, that have been kind of scared into silence, that have been intimidated, that have lived in fear 
for their lives legitimately all this time just because they went to a fucking party and they went to get a bit freaky and then they got obviously a bit crazy. Can you imagine? That's the really sad bit about it. And it's extra sad when you think about how he purported himself, how he presented himself. It's not like Diddy was like a sinister guy in public. Maybe towards the end, he did have that sinister kind of image, especially when you think about the Halloween outfits and shit, right? Batman, the fucking Joker shit that he did where he was really in character and he kind of looked a little bit tapped. There's even a video, I remember, of him doing it and walking in the street and um, he happens to bump into fucking uh, Tyler, the creator, who's in like a pickup truck and he's kind of looking at him smiling, but he's also looking at him a little bit concerned, like, rah, man, this guy is fucking tapped. You see Tyler, the creator, looking at him like, fucking hell, man, this guy's not all there. <laughs> so clearly you know towards the end he might he, he he may have been living his raps a bit too much right he might have been you know really kind of doing a whole lot of method acting there but the really horrible dark shit about this is that towards the end that he was trying to purport to be this like love guy he even changed his name to love he was trying to talk about being like a guy that brought people together a lot of black lives matter stuff that's why he ended up suing diageo which is another interesting theory. There's a theory out there. I don't know if you guys believe this. There's a theory that exists that allegedly this is a consequence of Diddy trying to come against the real, you know, power makers out there. When he tried to sue Diageo, the owners of Ciroc and other kind of, you know, liquor and kind of alcohol companies. And allegedly he was trying to sue them for um, some sort of racial discrimination thing. And the lawsuit was obviously, you know, going to be in the millions, if not in the billions, if he ended up kind of um, winning that lawsuit. But because of all the sexual allegations and harassments and the rapes, and obviously the lawsuit from Cassie, that lawsuit ended up kind of going away. Um, and But b because you put the lawsuit through, people are alleging, the conspiracy theory is, the powers that be kind of went to remind him of his position and put him back in his place and kind of push through that whole Cassie shit. That's the assumption, or that's the situ that's the that's the allegation that's kind of out there at the moment, which I'm not really sure if it's true. But regardless, absolutely wild to kind of witness this in real time. Such a powerful, influential figure being brought down like this, but also lets you question as you think about all the stuff that was going on that people weren't talking about, and you have to think about the silence too. The silence from the hip hop community has been deafening from some of the big major figures who are usually always very vocal about talking out about societal issues, who are very vocal about talking out about harassers and abusers and grapers and shit. The silence from these guys has been deafening. No one wants to touch this with a 10 foot barge pole. They're all avoiding it, which makes sense when you think about, you know, his obviously um, his reputation and shit. Um, when it comes to, to business, when it comes to violence and shit, where people are legitimately still scared that he can put a hit on them. But maybe there is a situation at hand here where some people are scared that they also might be complicit in this. Because when you watch this video... Trying to still connect the dots, we do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There type of area that you would assume a lot of people would be fans of kind of hanging out if they ever did go there and party so clearly i reckon a lot of people are keeping quiet about the situation because unfortunately they are complicit in this and they don't want to talk about this because a lot of people went to those parties because diddy had a very very nice assortment of properties in los angeles in miami in new york that are perfect the perfect places to go and flipping you know party and have a good time and have a quote-unquote freak off at so this might explain a lot of the reason why a lot of people in hip-hop community have been oddly quiet when it comes to the situation because i can't remember a situation like this 
where people were so quiet and didn't want to speak about it, didn't want to lend their opinion, were kind of keeping, you know, keeping their counsel, keeping quiet, doing the whole, like, let the facts kind of say what they facts say, blah, 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 blah. It's been kind of wild to see. I'm not going to lie. It's been absolutely wild to see this stuff play out in real time. And um, I'm curious to see what ends up transpiring because we still haven't got a real idea on what the charges are. Um, the only other sad thing about this is obviously did his kids were the ones that are getting put in cuffs when all this shit was happening, right? So Diddy's out here um, traveling around the world, allegedly in Antigua, trying to avoid the fucking feds. And then these kids are the ones that are getting fucking put in cuffs. That's pretty kind of crazy, right? And obviously, you know, it's, I'm assuming it's precaution because they're executing a warrant um, and then obviously searching the properties. I don't want anyone to kind of disturb their searches. So it makes a lot of sense in that regard. But the fact that he was able to jet just before the feds arrived is also maybe proof if ever you needed it that diddy is connected he might have got a little kind of insight from some of the people um behind the scenes about what was going on and when that warrant was going to get executed and he decided to kind of dip as soon as they flipping arrive, which is nuts in itself if you think about it it's nuts in itself that diddy has those type of connections where he has the feds on speed dial or some connection to the feds so they're able to send him a text and give him a bit of a heads up or maybe a lawyer again allegedly and let him know hey they're coming to get you he jumps in his flipping black private jet and obviously zips off from what i'm led to believe as well people were tracking his private jet i think last time they tracked it it was in antigua and now i think there's an ability to scrub your data from the public records of jet trackers online i'm not sure why that's available to to do because you'd imagine if you've got a jet and you know it's going over international airspace it should be available to be able to track but i'm assuming there is some sort of thing you can do where you can kind of get your data kind of scrubbed for those type of places but regardless crazy situation um really sad to see but like i said before considering how um open and expansive and amazing his properties were to look at from the bird's eye view some of these helicopter shots you would imagine a lot of people were at these fucking a lot of people at these parties, a lot of people that we kind of all know and love, celebrities, entertainers, artists, were all fucking there. And the fact that they, you know, were maybe all took part in it and all don't want to kind of speak on it, allegedly speaks to a lot of the dark shit that happens in the industry. But maybe, again, this should be a reckoning for all people and we might reach this conclusion, conclusion, a situation where maybe we'll start limiting some of these abusers and the shit that they do um, in obviously some of these parties because people will be a bit scared about make, you know not wanting to be the next person that kind of gets scummed in these type of situations. Um, the other thing that I saw online that was fucking wild, um, Big Up Milagro, Mobs World, um, she posted an alleged document here that was shared <clears throat> that allegedly is a standard NDA from Diddy. This is a standard NDA um, that Diddy allegedly gives to people when they come to his, I guess, apartment or maybe his parties or freak offs. I'm not really too sure. I'm going to read through it because this is pretty wild because I've never actually seen what an NDA is or what it actually looks like. But I'm assuming it's what we would assume it's going to be in terms of making sure that you don't record or speak about the things that you see here. But let's see actually what this NDA kind of sounds like. So this allegedly is Sean puffy combs's nda allegedly from what we see here courtesy of mobs world so it says here the following this confidentiality agreement is made an effective made and effective as of friday september 9th 2022 and on behalf of this person the term you shall include you your estate each corporation and other business rea in entity in which you have ownership and a beneficial interest and any of the persons and the entities owned and controlled by you and such businesses and all of your respective hires um, um heirs sorry sean diddy combs aka puff daddy artist privacy is high valued and all efforts will be made to maintain confidentiality with respect to information and other material of any kind concerning or related to directly and associated with the artist um, except for the information or material public intentionally disclosed by the artist you hereby irrevocably agree that a you shall not at any time use or disclose directly or indirectly to anyone any of the following increment information any past present or future which concerns in any which relation to the artist any past any artist parties ooh, here we go freak offs or business activities entertainment activities financial affairs or personal life and all such information shall be deemed confidential, private, secret, sensitive, and kept by you as confidentially described. Um, let's continue here. 
It also says artists sole exclusive property shall not be disclosed, removed, sold or disseminated, copied or otherwise or exploited by or behalf or written by you. This is very extensive, isn't it? Fucking hell. Basically, don't talk about me ever. Basically, that's what, it's what this this NDA says. Don't ever talk about me ever, right? This is a N, this is a fucking NDA NDA. Um, you shall not uh, you shall not you shall not and shall not authorize or facilitate any third party to without the artist's prior written consent, which may be withheld or any reason, and give any interviews or write any or prepare assist any preparation of any books or articles, make any remarks of any kind or create any material of any media without limitation, confirmation or denying confidential information related to the artist. To any use of by yourself, um whether or not publicly disclosed by the artist prohibited materials you hereby irrevocably grant convey and transfer and assign to the artist worldwide wow what that's a wild line there right so you have to give him all the stuff that you do make if you do to, okay i guess hand it over i guess that's what it means um it continues here party shall be entitled to recover any monies or ben benefits whatsoever received by or behalf of you fucking hell bro this is a nda of all nda this is like a lock and key nda it continues here um the foregoing expressly includes without limitation communication appearing on the internet via blogging or social networking such as facebook twitter instagram without limiting the foregoing you shall not without artist prior written authorization a tapes um, or any other recorded sound or image or any other materials of the artists and partners uh, B copy excerpt or otherwise use or dispose of any artist or artist per parties materials including any property or materials in your possession um, including without limit and your legal representative and heirs and successors and, and assignees all shall promptly deliver position of the artist in good condition I love that they did mention TikTok, by the way. Interesting, right? No mention of TikTok. It says Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So I wonder, can you break your NDA on TikTok? Is TikTok exempt because it's a Chinese-based company or something? Is that why? Maybe that's why, because it's Chinese-based. I'm not too sure, but TikTok is listed on there. But regardless, you cannot talk about Diddy in the slightest. He's got a fucking rock-solid team of people who say, don't talk about me, shut the fuck up, keep your mouth absolutely stum. Another quick update here, courtesy of the Diddy stuff. We've got here um, a... Diddy lawyer saying the following and um, the rap mogul lawyer says the he's facing an unprecedented ambush let's quickly read this courtesy of new york times a lawyer for sean combs a hip-hop mogul whose homes were raided by federal agents on monday called the searches a gross overuse of military level force hmm, that's true that is a good point because what actually came from those searches no charges so far there's no warrant out for his arrest even though he wasn't there um you know what did they really do? They just fucked up his house. Judging for the videos we see online, they fucked up his house, took some trainers and a couple of laptops and some tablets, right? But that's about it, really. So the lawyer for for Combs says it was a military level force level of force and criticized them as nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made on civil lawsuits. Rah, Ted. The lawyers are really riding hard for him, right? There's no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by the authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with the authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs or any of his family members have been arrested nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way possible. That is true though because I did see a picture or a video of Diddy at some party and allegedly, according to Hello Yassi and a few other people, maybe that Jaram guy, I forgot his name as well online, allegedly, um, uh, what's his name? Flavor Flav was at the party too. And he literally saw Diddy, but kind of blanked him. And Diddy awkwardly kind of saw him too and kept staring at him, but Flavor Flav wouldn't look at him either. So it kind of looked, it looked a bit sad. I'm not going to lie, because Diddy did look a little bit disheveled. Um, he looked kind of like lonely. He looked very paranoid. He kept checking his shoulders every time. So... Maybe Diddy had cooperated with the feds, cool, behind closed scenes or kind of closed doors, but he hasn't been living a free life. He's still been probably living with the looming threat of the feds being able to pick him up any time. So maybe that's the case. But that video specifically for me was more so um, an ind indication of how far he starts falling when it comes to the industry. And it kind of reminded me a lot of like, do you remember at work when like somebody gets fired or somebody's about to get fired and you know they are? 
it, it's almost like everybody kind of ignores them or pretends that they're not alive because you have this kind of like this stink around you. No one wants to kind of be associated with you. No one wants to be near you because they don't also want to be fired off the back of it or think that they're loyal to you and whatever it may be. So it kind of looked a little bit like that where everyone was kind of ignoring him and kind of acting like as if he didn't exist type of thing because it's pretty wild. I'm sure most of you have seen the video, but literally Flavor Flavor standing right in front of him, walks past him, talks to somebody else, doesn't turn around, Diddy doesn't try and tap him or anything and just awkwardly stares at him and keeps checking his shoulder. So maybe there's something going on there. It continues. On Monday, armed agents from Homeland Security searched two of Combs' home. We know about that. Um, the lawyer says as follows. This unprecedented ambush paired with the advanced coordination with the media presence. That's a very good point. The lawyer's being the the lawyer's making a really good point here. It did feel a bit like an ambush. Nothing of merit really came from it. No charges or anything. And the media coverage was crazy. It was wall to wall. TMZ got pictures of the videos and pictures of Diddy of the house being raided. They also got videos of the inside of it from the fucking um, body cams and shit. It was pretty wild how the media were in lockstep and arm with it. But to be fair, it wasn't LA. Um, TMZ is basically the unofficial, you know, spokespeople of fucking, you know, the LA police officers over there. Oh shit, Coiler. Sorry about that. I didn't hear you. My earphone, my earphone was out. Um, bro, that favor flay thing is AI. It looks like GTA 5. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Big up, Coiler. Thank you for the donation, brother. Um, I didn't really know if that, that is um uh, AI. If it is AI, fair, fair enough, but it looks fucking wild. It looks fucking wild to see fucking Flavor Flav, you know, giving Diddy the fucking cold shoulder. Anyway, it continues here. It says, and it's nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in a civil lawsuit. There's no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. On the same day as the uh, searches, federal agents also stopped Mr. Combs at an airport in Miami area as he was preparing to leave with the family members of Bahamas and took a number of children's devices from Mr. Combs. According to a person with knowledge of the matter, Mr. Combs was not arrested, remained in the United States, according to that person. Oh, okay. So he's not on the run then. So this idea that he's on the run isn't true. His, his electronics were taken from him. The police saw him at the airport and let him go. So it looks like they're building up a case. It looks like they're building up a case. They're leaving it out so he doesn't do anything crazy and kind of going from there. It continues. The raid was striking development of Mr. Combs, who's been on the one of the highest profile figures in the music industry of for decades and credited with transforming hip-hop and R&B in the 1990s. So clearly there is something going on in the background. We don't know what it is because that's how investigations fucking work. And I guess we have to kind of wait and see how it kind of plays out. But to see this guy's house get raided, like considering after everything was going on it's absolutely been wild and i'm eager to see how it does actually end i'm eager to see how it does actually end because damn has it been wild damn has it been wild the other thing as well which is really funny is this article again courtesy of mob radio so big up mob world obviously on twitter this screenshot is fucking hilarious so allegedly slim fug has got into the conversation I'm not going to play the video, but the kind of caption, it says as follows. Slim Fog chimes in on the Diddy and slams the black community for wishing down his, on his downfall. And it says the quote, we're losing another billionaire over allegations. So this is another kind of thing that kind of seems to permeate the black, no, the African-American black hip hop community is that for some reason, they seem to always love to turn a blind eye at people's crimes when they have money. If you have money and you have fame, everybody can turn a blind eye to you. They can excuse anything that you do. Just because you're a businessman, you're an entrepreneur, you're a mogul, it, it means that everything that you do, even when it comes to exploitation, is somewhat justified. And if what Diddy's been accused of is true, if he's guilty of his crimes, the guy deserves to not be in prison. He deserves to be buried underneath a prison. If he's had an unprecedented run of 30 plus years where he's been abusing, manipulating, harassing and downright graping people, he deserves everything that's coming at him and more. And the people associated with him who turned a blind eye to it, the people associated to it that facilitated it, they also deserve to get taken down. This is not something that is like, um, this is not one of these kind of takedowns because he's a black man. This is a takedown because from what we've been led to believe in the civil lawsuits, he's a piece of shit, allegedly. According to those civil lawsuits and what we've been able to see and what he kind of settled on when it comes to Cassie, Diddy is an alleged piece of shit. And if that's the case, and he did anything criminal and he broke the law, he should face the consequences of it. And it should be kind of detailed um, so that others who, you know, 
want to do certain things can be dissuaded from it and he'd be using an example as to how you can't necessarily always get away with some of these crimes but i hate how some of these guys always love to excuse or love to be like oh we're gonna pray for him and do this sort of nonsense only because he's rich not because he's a good guy or because Simfuck has a personal relationship with diddy or has known him for time no it's just because he's only saying this because the guy's got money that's the only reason why I say this. And this is almost quite disgusting. In the same way that people were calling out the whole Ye thing, right? Kanye, when he was freaking out, people were calling that out and saying that, hey, you're taking advantage of the fact that you're influential, you've got money, you're well-loved and stuff, and just saying all this nonsense. But just because you've got money, status and clout, all this malarkey and you're famous, doesn't excuse you from being called out for your bullshit. And I think this is the same scenario. So I think Slim Thug needs to allow it and chill out, let the facts play out as it may. But just defending somebody based on their bank account is incredibly redacted. Incredibly redacted. If you're gonna if you're gonna defend them because you know them, that's one thing. I think you're you're well within your right to do so. But defending somebody solely based on the fact that they have a fat fa they have a fat bank account is just one of the most crazy things ever. But it also goes to show that thing that girls say, where they say like boys are the biggest groupies, might be actually true. Men actually might be bigger groupies than women. Because the way some guys stand certain dudes because of their bank account, because of the women they fuck, because of the cars they drive is like, you know what I mean? It's, it's probably more gay than guys having sex. I swear to God, it actually is. It's actually way gayer than actually two dudes fucking. How some dudes are like, you know, it's like the Andrew, it's like the Andrew Tate stuff, right? How some men like adore and kind of worship that kind of type. Dude, like, why are you adoring and worshiping some like normal dude who's just like you, who just happened to kind of work out or figure out some like high level, high value male alpha scan thing? Like, he's no better than you. Like, come on, man, relax. But hey, what do I know? What do I know? Absolutely nothing.